from heaven. Us as you may be seated when you're ready. Hell fell from heaven. Dear hearts, if you keep me company for a few moments, I'd like to let you know that we see them listed in paragraph five of the letter to the trillions. We see them mentioned in the first epistle of Clement of Rome. Evagarius, Ponticus, referred to them as companions and models for behavior. Augustine of Hippo said they are here to direct us to the true source of all happiness. An exile prophet, an exile prophet stationed in Babylon said they have two pairs of wings and four faces. An eagle eye prophet said there are, they are close to God and they lead us in worship as we head to heaven. Dear hearts, Everything I spoke of collectively are called angels. In the Holy Scripture, we see three named angels. Now, there are legions of angels mentioned, but in the Holy Writ, in the Bible, we see three named angels. Now, there are some lost books called the Apocrypha that list another angel by the name of Raphael. Raphael is an angel believed in the antiquity to be the angel that helps with healing. But he is not included in the canonized version of the Bible because the Apocrypha are known as the lost books because they feel there was some taintedness to those books. So he is not listed in the 66 books that you read. The three named angels that are listed in the 66 books of the Holy Bible, the first named angel or an angel with a name is Gabriel. Gabriel is the first named angel or an angel who the Bible gives a name to. Gabriel, dear hearts, is known as the angel of announcement the angel of announcement. Anytime God desired to put an announcement into the earth realm, oftentimes he used Gabriel. So we see Gabriel in Daniel chapter 8, verse 16, giving an announcement about something. And then in the New Testament, we see Gabriel come on the scene in Luke chapter 1, verse 19. And he tells you, I am Gabriel and I speak for the Lord. So Gabriel, dear hearts, is known collectively as the angel since he's speaking. He's known as the angel of the word. Did you hear me? Keep me company here for a moment. The second named angel in the Bible is Michael. Michael is the angel that if you're not a curser or a cusser, you want to have Michael by your side. Michael is the angel. If you don't like to fight, if you go to the mall or a club or something like that, Michael is the angel that you take with you because Michael in the scripture is always fighting. He's always fighting. He, 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 he loves to fight. I, 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 if I didn't know anything better, I think he would have wrote that scripture, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force because he's always fighting. In fact, in Jude chapter 1, verse 19, he is fighting for the body of Moses. So while Gabriel is the angel of the word, Michael comes and he's the angel of warfare. The third named angel was created with the name of Lucifer. Now, Lucifer is the angel not of the word. Lucifer is an angel not of warfare. But the book says in the Bible, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13, it says that the pipes and the timbrels were created for you to play. 
When Lucifer came, he already had an orchestra of instruments for him to play because Lucifer, the beautiful angel, was not created as an angel of the word. He was not created as an angel of warfare. The music instruments were already there, so Lucifer was created as an angel of worship. Am I moving too fast? So Lucifer being created as an angel of worship, remember when Lucifer got big-headed, and we're going to explain in a few moments how this happened, but when he got big-headed, he lost the position that he was created to inhabit. You know why? Because Gabriel is still giving us a word. Michael is still involved in warfare, but there is no single entity responsible for worship in the earth realm. So be careful when you call yourself a worship leader. Ain't no worship leader. We're just worship participants because nobody has a single dictatorship over worship. The book says that the Lord seeks those, not one person, those who will worship him. So now since Satan is no longer inhabiting the position that he was created to do, everybody becomes their own personal worship leader. Now since, dear hearts, since Lucifer, who's no longer Lucifer because when he was in heaven, loose lux comes from the word light. When he lost the light, he became dark. So the book says in chapter 1, verse 2 of Genesis, that darkness was brooding over the face of the earth. So Satan been here a long time causing the people of God to sin, to doubt God, and to lose their worship. Now, since he no longer has a job, that rascal is unemployed. Now, hear me, hear me, hear me. He's unemployed. And he is an unemployed entity who gets no benefit. You don't get benefits when you don't work. And since he does not work and he don't get benefit, the only way he can get some sense of belonging is to bother in your life. So he is unemployed. He ain't got nothing else to do but to bother you. He's unemployed. So the book says, in the book of Job chapter 2, verse 2, it says that he is walking to and fro, looking for somebody to bother. Did you hear me right? He's a walking to and fro, looking, now hear me closely, for something to get into or someone to get into. I didn't get a whole lot of amens on that. He's looking for something to get into. He's bored or he's looking for someone to get into. Now, this is a theological debate. I just want to sell it right quick. If you are a true believer, Satan can't possess you, but he can influence you. And everybody, I ain't going to say everybody, everybody up in here, up in here, has had a moment in your life where Satan didn't necessarily possess you, but he did influence you. When you can cuss folks out, that ain't the Holy Spirit telling you to do that. I want to share with you that we currently know of about 6,000 different spirits. And if it, ain't, if it ain't the Holy Spirit, it's another spirit. When you can get mad at folks who praise God in front of you because you can't see. That ain't the Holy Spirit. That's another spirit. If you can't see, why don't you get up and praise God too? So no matter, dear hearts, how many scriptures you know or how much Holy Ghost you show, Satan got your address. Now, you don't want to believe it, but it's okay because in this modern theology, whether we have this expanded consciousness, people don't believe Satan is real. And don't, 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 don't look at the person next to you 
Just, just look ahead. But some of y'all know maybe the person that live in your house got the devil in them. On your job got the devil in them. On your community got the devil in them. And sometimes it's you that got the devil in you. You hear me talking? I'm the pastor of this very fine church. But sometimes the devil really does get the better of me. And I'll be honest, he sometimes wins some battles, but that rascal ain't going to win the war. You ever just woke up not feeling right? Seem like ain't nothing really wrong. And you just don't want to be bothered with nobody. And everything, since you don't want to be bothered with nobody, everything bothers you because you bothered and everything bothered. I mean, just the slightest thing get on your last nerve. That ain't the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit trying to influence you to go against the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Because the book says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you. But if you're not feeding your body holy stuff, some messed up stuff going to get in there. So the devil desires to take from you what he lost. Don't you miss that? The devil desires to take from you, Trail, what he lost. He lost the ability to worship God, so he don't want you doing it either. Let me bowl down your alley right quick. You ever been in a relationship with somebody who it didn't work, but they didn't want you to get in a relationship with nobody else? They didn't work in the relationship, but they didn't want you to get in a relationship with somebody. I mean, they just mad. They don't want it. It didn't work with them, and they don't want you to work with nobody else. Now, I saw a lot of folk look down. You got two glasses. You either got a window or a mirror. And many people know folks, and you may be that folk. My relationship didn't work with this person, but I don't want that person to go with nobody else and be happy. All right, it didn't get no whole lot of amen. Say ouch. Or say a woman. You can't say amen, say a woman. So the devil don't want you to do or to have what he had before. But whenever the devil is messing, it's because God is blessing. So let me hurry up. That's the, that's, 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 that's the, the story here now is the study. So we've been through, number one, we've been through when hell fell. We believe that happened in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 where it says and darkness was over the sea. But not only do we have to talk about when hell fell, number two we need to talk about why hell fell. So Bolton, why, 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 why did hell fall? Ezekiel chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 14 gives us a very good clue on why Satan fell from heaven. Why is this? Because when you look at these particular verses or what we call in seminary this pericope, we see that these are actually talking about the Babylonian and the Tyre king. But these Babylonians and these folks from Tyre, what happens is these kings were largely influenced and possessed and oppressed by Satan. So it is a symbolic situation. And you see it even now, where governments, political entities, are not being directed by God, they're being influenced by Satan. Ain't nothing new under the sun. And that's why the Bible says we need to pray for those who are in leadership. Pray for those who are in government. Pray for those who serve as your pastors. Because it is easy for a person with power to let it go to their head. 
It's a dangerous thing, dear hearts, for some folks to get power. It's dangerous for some folks to get a title. Let me share something with you. Many times people do with titles what they could never do with their own name. So the Bible warns us, even in the book of Job, chapter 32, verse 22, it says, be careful not to give folks flattery titles. They get so high you can't find them. They get so pious so you can't tell them nothing. They become so holy that everything around them stinks. And Satan was in that predicament where the book says he let his beauty get the best of him. So the book says that iniquity was found in his heart. Don't you roll? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Keep, 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 keep it open. Keep it open. Iniquity was found in his heart, not in his mouth, not in his mind, in his heart. Why you say that, Bolton? Because you better be careful of the people who say, oh, the Lord know my heart. He sure do. You cuss somebody out, uh, when well, the Lord know my heart, he sure does. You talk about somebody, when well, the Lord know my heart, yep. And if he find iniquity in it, you about to fall. That's why the book says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. You better guard your heart. Because the heart really tells you who you are. So don't you get confused by folks who are always smiling. That's the face. But in their heart, they're hateful. That's why the book says, give us a clean heart. And whenever your heart is wrong, it's going to become all about you. So the book says in Isaiah what 14, it says, I will do this. I will do that. I will be the like the most high. I. He gave five eyes because it was so much about him that he forgot about them. You know folks like that? I know you do. Won't say amen unless they sing. Won't shout unless they leave the song. Won't say hallelujah unless they praying. It's about I. And he said I five times. Dear heart, I submit to you. He had an I problem. And whenever it all revolves around you, it's about to fall. Because you must know that nothing that you have that's good came from you and your own. God is good and he shares that goodness with you. So you ought to always realize that what you have God gave you. Did you hear me right? Nothing good is in you except through the Holy Spirit. You know your attitude. Some of you all wouldn't be in church. You'd be somewhere else had it not been for the Holy Spirit who stopped you and blocked you from doing some stuff. So the Lord not only orders your steps, he also orders your stops. He stops you from doing some stuff that you yourself 
desire to do. So don't you ever think, dear hearts, that you are so blessed on your own. Don't you ever think that you natively smell good. Listen to me. You ain't going to like it, but I'm telling you the truth. You are a species with feces. Did you hear me? You are a species with feces because the book says that our righteousness is as a filthy rag. And a filthy rag, for those who don't know, in the Bible was a used sanitary product. And the book says that's our righteousness. And you know two pigs playing in the same mud can't clean themselves. They need some help from somebody that's on the outside that ain't dirty. And the book says, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We've carried every one of us to our own way. But the Lord had laid upon him the iniquity of us all. You're only here by the grace of God. You're only alive by the grace of God. You only look that good by the grace of God. So as I bring this thing to a close, what? What I know, God taught me. Where I am, God brought me. What I'm doing, God is helping me. And I'm here today because he never left me. So you can look at me. I'm a testimony. I'm not standing here on my own. I didn't get here all alone. It was Jesus. The rock in a weary land. Didn't mean to get happy, but I'm there. Jesus. And so don't you get to the point where it's all about you. God gives you the strength to lift your hands. God gives you the balance to do your dance. God put that money in your bank account. God put that food on your table. That coffee in the cup. God did that. He put that breath in your body. Put that blood in your veins. God did it. So every time I think about the goodness of Jesus, I got to thank him. So we, we see when he fell. We see why he fell. Last, thirdly, finally, dear hearts, I got to finish this, okay? Where he fell. Evil is everywhere. And evil is one letter short of devil. Evil is in the White House. Evil is in the courthouse. Evil is in the schoolhouse. Evil is in the church house. And evil is even in some of y'all house. And it's important for you to, at times, in your Christian sojourn, walk through your house and pray over every room. And say, if it ain't the Holy Spirit, it got to go. And don't just pray in your physical room, pray in your anatomical room. Because I'm going to share this with you. The book says in Job that when the sons of man came before God, the Bible says, and Satan came also. So wherever believers are, the devil is also. So don't you come to church and look for no perfect church. The devil here too. It just takes the believers to pray the hell out of them. And everywhere the devil is, when he's on your job, is pray for me. When he's in your house, is pray for me. But the moment he comes into church, you leave. Why you didn't say pray for me there? 
you got to understand wherever there's a Jesus, there's a Judas. But the book says that Jesus prayed for you. Because he knew if Jesus chose 12 and one was a devil, you're going to choose some devils too. You're just not going to know it all the time. And that's why it's important. Hear me closely. I got to close, y'all. It's important to have a spirit of discernment. Now, don't shout too quick over a discernment. Everybody on vacation, I'm going to take me a vacation and I'll say this. Don't you shout too quick over discernment because discernment, people often talk about discernment, how you can see something in somebody else. True discernment makes you see you for who you are also. You ain't always right. You ain't always got it together because where Satan is, he's going to influence you to make bad decisions. And it says, when God brought the children of men to him, Satan came also. It's a daily struggle to live holy. I said on this side, middle section. It's a daily struggle to live holy. I thought I'd get four more amens. Let me try this side. It's a daily struggle to live holy. Every single day, you got to deny your flesh. Looking twice where you had no business looking once. Every day, you got to deny your flesh. Desiring rightfully to cuss somebody out, but being quiet daily. You got to deny your flesh. Because Satan has been walking, waiting for you to fall. Waiting for you to look unchristian and act like you have a human. Because that's his job now. He lost glory. So he can give you hell. Amen. Amen. And the last thing I'm going to say, I promise. I want you to know this. That the book said he is the accuser of the brethren. The book said he's the adversary. And he desires. He wakes up in a sense every morning talking about you. I'm going to do this today to mess up Sister Green. I'm going to do this today to get Sister Doris Jean to mess up. I'm going to do this today. They have been meetings about you before you wake up. And that's why it's important every day you wake up, before you face your day, you need to face your father. Before you get out of bed, you need to get into his presence. Because he ain't going to stop. He's not going to stop. But if he can stop you, his job is done. I want to share this with you. Satan has liberties in this earth, but he also has boundaries in this earth. And so, dear hearts, don't you let don't you let bad days and a bad devil make you think you got a bad life and serve a bad God. The only bird, the only bird that got the nerve to mess with an eagle is a crow. The only bird that got the nerve to mess with an eagle is a crow. The Bible says that you will mount up on wings as eagles. The only bird that got the nerve to mess with an eagle is a black bird, a crow, a dark bird. 
a crow. And what the crow does is it gets on the shoulder, the back of an eagle, and just pecks at the neck of the eagle. It gets on the back of the eagle and pecks at the neck of the eagle because the crow knows the neck holds up the head. And he can get the neck to give in, the head is done. But what the eagle does, He never turns around and say, crow, why you pecking my neck? He never even pays attention to the pecking of the neck. All the eagle does is fly higher. Because the eagle knows the higher it flies, there's a point in the eagle's existence that he can breathe air that the crow can't. So all he doing is flying high.